my life. Oh, you know I was only kidding, Oh, though. I know you are, Miss Lulu. You know, I tried to do a bit of pop singing on my show. Did you? Do you know what a television critic wrote about me? No. He said, Basil Brush, once seen, never remembered. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, some critics can be very nice to newcomers just starting in show business. Oh, yes. I remember when I first started, Basil, yes. I was thrilled when a critic said, Lulu's voice comes out very well. And it should. Look where it's been. <laughs> But you know something, if you want to get noticed, yes. what you need is a gimmick. What sort of gimmick? Well, Gilbert O'Sullivan started with a cloth cap and braces. Nothing else. <laughs> of course he wore something else. Oh, yeah. And then Elton John had enormous glasses. Oh, I bought a pair of glasses just like Elton John's. Mm. Did you? The glasses were bigger than I was. <laughs> <laughs> when I put them on, I made a spectacle of myself. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, I think to get on, yes. you really want something different. Really? Mm. Yeah, I could find myself on new faces, if I'm not careful. <laughs> or on entity squares. <laughs> what about yodeling? Yodeling? Yes, like, yodel, 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 lady. I beg your pardon. Yodel, lady, yodel, lady, yodel, oh. lady. Nice words. Yeah. Well, go on, try. It's very easy. All right. Give us a hand for the quavers, Mr. Bertie. All right, Mr. Bertie. <laughs> you the lady, you the lady, the lady. I'm the lady, the lady who. You the lady, you the lady that I love. I'm the lady, the lady who. You the little lady. I love your mind. How terribly kind. I love your chin. Oh, say it again. All right. I love your chinny chin chin. I've only got one. Oh. <laughs> you're the fella, you're the fella that rocks me. I'm a fella, a rocker fella. You're the fella, you're the fella that rocks me. A little fella, a jockey sized fella. A foxy Rockefeller. Ooh. I love your face. See in the right place. And I love your brush. Ooh, thanks very much. I love your ears. I've had them for years. <laughs> my little bands. A rash of a chance. Sing it, baby. You're the lady, you're the lady that I love. I'm the lady, the lady who. You're the fella, you're the fella that rocks me. Rockefeller, lucky fella. You're my Rockefeller. You're my Cinderella. Ooh, 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 ooh. I love you. Bow, wow, woo. I love you. Bow, wow, woo. I love you. Oh. My briefs are in my case. You better put them on, you'll catch your death of cold. <laughs> the court will rise. Here we go. Stand up then. I am standing up. It's me cloak that's sitting down. <laughs> the court is now in session. Mr. Justice Hardnut presiding. First case, my lad, the Crown versus Clarence Buttermill. Bring in the accused. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, but this is going to be easy for me. Look at him. Well, beauty's only skin deep. <clears throat> Does your client plead guilty or not guilty? Not guilty, your battleship. Definitely not guilty. <laughs> I mean, look at him. He's the picture of innocence. Mm. He's never stolen anything before. Well, who's for the prosecution? I am the lad Roy North QC, and may it please the court, I call the first witness, please, Constable Nickham. Please, Constable Nickham. <laughs> Swear to tell the truth, the old truth, nothing but three. PC 148, I, Nickham. Please stop the <laughs> this examination. When the accused was arrested, these items fell from his person. I ask you, 
What does this suggest? He had a hole in his pocket. <laughs> For what purpose would a man use a pair of nylon stockings? Well, there's a lot of it about. <laughs> Show the court, Constable, how a villain would use that stocking. <laughs> Excuse me, Constable. Your seam isn't straight. <laughs> You see what that stocking does for the constable? Yes, it makes him look years younger. <laughs> constable, is it true that this man is known to the police as a cat burglar? Objection! My client wouldn't go around pinching pussies, would you, Clarence? <laughs> and the constable would testify that when he addressed, arrested this man, he was the worse for drink. Just a minute. I want to be objectionable again. Is my learned friend intimating that my harmless, hard-done by client was under the affluence of alcohol? Yes, I am. He was as drunk as a lord. Did you say drunk as a lord? Yes, my lord. Ooh! I don't believe in your seamanship. He was as sober as a judge. Thank you. <laughs> During the months of May, June and July, this man committed six burglaries per week. If everybody worked as hard as him, this country would be on the way back to prosperity. <laughs> <laughs> your steamship. My client is a conscientious man of toil. So conscientious, he came straight here in his working clothes. <laughs> Standing there in the dock, upright, tall, dark and handcuffed, a pillar of respectability. <laughs> there stands a truly humane man. My lord, what has this man done for humanity? Well, for one thing, he kept three or four detectives in regular work. I appeal to your comradeship. Your lordship, you fool! Sorry, your lordship, you fool. Who said that? <laughs> he did. I did not! Mr. North, I will not countenance any flippancy on the part of the prosecution. When will you call to the bar? He doesn't have to be called to the bar. He's in there as soon as it opens. <laughs> <laughs> what about Silence, the rest? Mr. North, this is a court of law. The law is an ass. Ooh! Did you hear what he said to your flagship? He called you an ass. Silence! <laughs> Silence in court! Silence! <laughs> oh, I say, I'll be having a smashing time. <laughs> Time once again for another thrilling episode in our serial story, Bulldog Basil, Secret yes. Service Man. Ready for this week's instalment, Basil? Yes, I'm listening. Basil learned that he was a colonel who commanded a regiment of Indians. Any cowboy? Of course there weren't any cowboys. He was in the Indian Army. Oh. And had lost an eye in a skirmish in the Khyber Pass. You know that colonel we met in the country last week? Oh, you mean Colonel Badshot Frimley? Yes, he's got a glass eye, you know. Really? Mm. Did he tell you? Not exactly. It came out in the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> At the ship's dance on the previous evening, Basil had met the Colonel's wife in the gentleman's excuse me. What was she doing in there? <laughs> <laughs> the gentleman's excuse me is a dance. Oh, I bet you're ever so pudding. <laughs> she was the perfect example of a mensab in the Raj, yes. typically British. My landlady is typically British. She looks like John Bull. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be rude. I wouldn't be rude. <laughs> <laughs> and the lady had told Basil that she was a direct descendant of General Lord Clive, one of the foremost conquerors of India. Now, there's a coincidence. What? I'm one of the foremost conquerors of Shepherd's Bush. Yeah. Mm. That's my champion conquer there. Oh, really? Yes. That's a 29er. A 29er? Yes. That's very good, but just a minute. What? I've got one here. Huh? 36er. <gasps> a 36er? That's right. Wow! Whoa! Would you like to become a member of the BBCC? What's the BBCC? The Basil Brush Conquer Club. <laughs> you All have right, to then. play me first, you have to play me first, and if I beat your 36er, my 29er will become a, um, a, um, a heck of a lot of her, won't it? Mm. Right, you're on then. All right, well now, mind where you're hitting. You could knock my little bonce off, you know. All right. right. <laughs> Found the wrong way. Disnitigrated my 29er. <laughs> I've nurtured that conker since last year. I harvested that conker with my own two little paws. I soaked it in olive oil, pickled it in vinegar, baked it in the oven. <laughs> now look at it. I wonder what it tastes like. <laughs> anyway, mine's a 65er now. Just a minute. What? Hang about. Hang ever so about. <laughs> I'm going to call up my reserves. 
I've got a second string to my conker. Yeah? Tinker, bring on my reserve conker. There's a good boy. Come along, fetch it. That's it. Uh, here he is. Uh, stay, boy. Stay, stay. Yeah. <laughs> There's a good boy. Give me the conker. Come on, give back to the conker. Come on, drop it. Drop it. Drop it. Drop it, you fool! <laughs> Now get that string out of the way. I'm gonna beat this. Keep your chin up. Right. right. And don't move it. That's I'm cheating. I'm gonna move it. I'm gonna move it. I'm gonna move it. I'll get two goes. Oh, two. I'll get three. <laughs> Got it. Ah, no. Uh, no. Hey, what are you, hey, what are you doing? <laughs> Great. As an Indian steward in a turban brought round a tray of drinks. Basil failed to see him pour the contents of a phial into the glass of port. Engrossed in the conversation, he raised the <laughs> deadly Dr. Drake to his lips. <laughs> and that's all we've got time for, Basil. There's no more interruptions. <laughs> oh, that's better. I'm dead unlucky now, aren't I? What do you mean, unlucky? No muzzle. <laughs> Basil's glass was poisoned with some deadly arsenic. That glass of pookie poona's gonna make him Uncle Dick. Someone tried to murder him. He'll fix it double quick. Fitfans used to tremble when they heard his name. Will he drink the poison? Is our hero doomed to die? If someone doesn't warm him, he's gonna kiss himself goodbye. Will the deadly Ying Tong hear again his battle cry? Stand up for England, oh man, duty. He was a brave, brave man. Bulldog <laughs> Basil, the secret service man. In India and Africa, in China and Quite joke, you scoundrel!